Hello folks, so with the 1.0 release of Envoy Gateway having just been released, I wanted to give you a quick tour of some of the features that are available now. I have this scripted up, uh, I'll admit, so that you don't have to sit here and watch me make a bunch of typos. Uh, so let's just run through what we've got. The first thing I'm going to do is install Envoy Gateway. So this is a fairly simple uh, Helm command. You can see we're installing version 1.0 and we're using the, the values file that's printed above. There's, there's not too much to see in there. This is pretty, pretty default configuration. This should hopefully be fairly quick to install. Uh, Envoy Gateway is designed to be a, you know, a lightweight um, ingress controller and, and sort of API gateway light that addresses 80% of the features that, that most folks are gonna to wanna to use, but without um, its own custom API, you know, its own custom uh, CRDs, without heavyweight installation and maintenance processes. Okay, so we're already done. Uh, and my script is now showing us all of the pods in the cluster. I've got a few uh, demo applications running. So you know, maybe representative of a cluster you've got lying around um, that you want an uh, ingress controller in. I've got Cert Manager, I've got Prometheus, and now we have this one pod in Envoy Gateway system. We have this one Envoy Gateway pod. So that's the control plane sitting there waiting to go. Okay, so now I'm going to take the first step in configuring Envoy Gateway. Now this is a gateway class uh, resource. So this is all from the Kubernetes Gateway API. Uh, this is a you know community-driven uh, standard effort. Uh, so the Kubernetes used to have the Ingress API that was limited in a bunch of ways. So we now have the Gateway API and this is an official you know upstream Kubernetes project. This isn't some, some custom set of resources. Uh, and the gateway class, as you can see, is, is from that API group from the Kubernetes gateway API. So this isn't really going to do very much at all. Uh, this is just going to uh, give a reference to the, the control plane that I just installed because Envoy Gateway lets us have multiple gateways, you know, multiple actual physical ingress proxies running in the system. Uh, and it lets uh, each of those be associated with a different Envoy Gateway control plane instance, if that's what you want with, with different settings. Uh, but I'm just gonna sort of uh, set up the identity one here. So we'll just apply that. Okay, so the next thing is a gateway. Let's get some Envoy proxies running at the edge. Let's get you know an actual, an actual ingress point for our system. So again, from the Kubernetes uh, gateway API. So you might recognize this if, you, if you've used the ingress resource before, which you almost certainly have as you know, sort of part of Ingress. So uh, the Gateway API has a few separate resources, it decouples a lot of what Ingress talks about. Uh, so here, this is um, the configuration sort of for the running proxies themselves. So this is saying, well, I want you to run some proxies and I want them to listen on port 80. So this is the, the sort of lower level part of that. This is like an Nginx uh, server block, if you're familiar with, with that system. So we're going to apply that. Uh, so we now have our Gateway. Uh, and pretty soon it will get, because I'm running uh, on a cluster in AWS, pretty soon that'll get a, a public DNS address. Okay, so we can now start routing things. So this is the other half of that ingress um, resource that we used to use. So this is the HTTP route, and there's there's other route objects to describe. TCP routes, uh, gRPC routes, you know, TLS, SNI pass-through routes, all of this stuff is... Uh, is no longer shoehorned into into one resource like it was in Ingress with you know with annotations and extensions. This is all properly modeled first class. So I'm going to do the most common thing, run some HTTP. So I'm running HTTP bin in my cluster. So we're going to attach to to that gateway to that physical proxy I just um, uh, called apps that I just deployed. This uh, is going to listen for a, for a particular host name. So HTTP bin, as it happens, does not like to be path hosted. It doesn't like to be uh, to be running under a sub path. Like, you know, it uh, it uses a lot of a lot of absolute URLs and stuff. So we're going to give this thing its whole uh, its whole own host name. Uh, so I'm going to match all the paths, you know, prefix of of slash, and we're going to send it to the Kubernetes service HTTP bin. So we'll just go ahead and apply that. Um, I'll do another couple just to show an example. We'll run through them very quickly. So this is a little uh, a little app a little pod that I wrote uh, this is actually this is happy to be path hosted so this is on the uh, this is not specifying a host name right so this will actually match every other host name in the system uh, you know your sort of configuration might vary 
but this is uh, this is path routed and we've got we've got two paths here and we're going to replace we're going to match those prefixes and replace them with uh, with forward slash and then one more for another example app I've got which we'll probably be seeing most of uh, it's a little utility that runs uh, that uh, just logs every HTTP call it gets so that we can we can sort of see what's going on right imagine like an echo server but rather than echoing the request back it just logs it to um, to stand it out so we can view it with kubectl logs so this is going to sit under it, under its own path again attached to the uh, to the gateway that we deployed okay so now we can see an envoy gateway system we've got the control plane running as before and we've got another pod uh, which is our actual uh, physical gateway that we asked for so those those running envoy proxies the uh, the data plane so now we should be able to go and uh, hit some of these apps. So I have this domain name under my own domain uh, pointed at my AWS uh, ELB, which is automatically made by Envoy Gateway. And we can go and hit uh, eg demo. Great. So this will be the 404 page because actually nothing on that domain matches the uh, the root path, but I can go and get HTTP bin, and there we go. Uh, and we can also find the other apps uh, that I deployed. So let's go find <coughs> HTTP log app. There we go. It doesn't do very much other than you know say who it is and, and what version it is, and, and that it logged uh, our request. So next thing we uh, can do is show TLS. Uh, this is you know. okay. So the next thing we can do is enable uh, TLS. This is obviously a, you know a very common requirement. If you're hosting an API or, or a website, you're going to want HTTPS uh, these days. So uh, I can use Cert Manager to issue the certificates. There's an integration with the Gateway API, like there's an integration with Ingress Resources. So we'll just cert manager is already running to save us some time, um, but I'll, I'll show you all of the configuration to show there's no tricks. So uh, this is a cluster issuer that's just going to use Let's Encrypt. We'll apply that. Uh, there's a, I've got the staging one as well, still left over from my from my demos, I guess. So now we're going to reassert this gateway. So this is the same gateway as before, but it now also listens on 443 for HTTPS. Uh, it actually now only listens for this for this one domain name uh, because with, with TLS obviously we do need to we do need to have a domain name uh, and we're going to terminate TLS and we're going to reference uh, a given certificate you know for the public key to do that um, but there's an annotation that that secret doesn't exist yet but there's now an annotation uh, on this resource which says that uh, if you're familiar with Cert Manager you'll recognise this says cert manager should go and use uh, let's encrypt to to go and make that certificate okay we apply that and now uh, i've skipped ahead there slightly sorry we should now hopefully be able to go and access the website over https The certificate might take a little while in the background to uh, to be minted. Let me just magically chop this video and, and come back when it's been done. Ah, I didn't even need to. There we go. Uh, no editing tricks there. There's uh, there's HTTPS, and we didn't get a you know certificate warning or anything because this is a valid uh, public certificate because we've we've issued it with with Let's Encrypt. So so there we go. HTTPS is is that simple. Right. Next feature is. Uh, authentication using uh, JWTs or JOTs. So if you're hosting an API, this is you know very likely something you're going to want for machine to machine, machine to machine uh, authentication uh, from you know a, a, an app, a, a script, or a, or a bot or whatever. So the Gateway API doesn't model everything we want to do yet. The Gateway API uh, design is being taken very carefully. Uh, there's a committee with you know a huge amount of different stakeholders represented, so it it doesn't incorporate it incorporates gateways and HTTP routes and the fundamentals uh, for some things like uh, JOT authentication. The final 
gateway API, you know, CRD spec isn't quite there yet because they want to be very careful to get it right. So Envoy proxy, uh, the Envoy gateway project defines its own um, CIDs uh, for that. Uh, and the idea is that all of these will go upstream, you know, subject to subject to a, a great deal of scrutiny. So this is a, this is an Envoy gateway uh, CID uh, for now, uh, and this is security policy. So this again attaches, it attaches to the gateway. So it's gonna to apply to all of the routes and uh, we are taking, uh, we're, we're basically saying that all requests need to have uh, a jot. Uh, and this is the, the JWKS. This is the, the essentially the public key store to validate it against. I'm actually, because I, I give this demo at a lot of conferences where the Wi-Fi is not very good, I've got a local mirror of the, the JWKS. So there's actually an Nginx pod in the cluster that's serving that JWKS so we don't have to fetch it from the internet. But it's the same, it's the same deal. So we'll go ahead and apply that. Okay, so now let's try to uh, let's try to call that. So I'm going to go and hit um, yeah, the HTTP log uh, path uh, of the Envoy gateway. So this is exactly what we've been seeing in the browser, but because we're um, showing machine to machine auth, you know, we're showing jots. This is this is something better shown on the on the command line. Now this one, of course, does not provide uh, a JWT. So sure enough, so printsert is a little utility again that I wrote that uh, you know, just shows you uh, HTTP um, uh, transaction information. It's it's you know like like a more verbose curl maybe. Um, so this is saying yeah, we got an HTTP two response, but it was a four hundred one unauthorized, and the body of that response is you know on for gateway telling us that the the jot is missing. So exactly as we might expect. Now let's go and make a call uh, that that has a JWT. I'm just going to grab one off the internet. So this is this is the wrong JWT. This is not signed by my uh, public key infrastructure. So although one is present, again we are 401 unauthorized because JWT verification has failed. And now finally we can go and call this with uh, the correct JWT. And one that I've made is on my local system. And there we go, 200 okay. Uh, and we got the uh, the same body that we that we saw in the browser. So it's it's the same piece of software. 